Welcome back to Politics in Hawaii with Dennis Esaki on Think Tech Hawaii. Today we'll be speaking with Gloria Borland, president of We Talk Story Inc., who had her own magazine publishing business covering tourism around the world and even had a TV series about business. I met her through a mutual friend named Rodney Sato along with Kenny Nowen. She grew up on Oahu, went to work in Washington, D.C., worked for Senator Inouye and others, including Patsy Mank and the Capitol Hill Women's Political Caucus. She also started the magazine. Uh, she did too many things <laughs> to list here. We only have half an hour. Um, Gloria, welcome to Politics in Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Yeah. Please tell us a little more about yourself and uh, what you do with your podcast. Well, um, I grew up here and, and I really believe that when you, when you grow up in Hawaii, you always carry Hawaii with you no matter where you go. And so I went to college in Washington, D.C., and I always felt like, you know, still the local girl. Um, my father uh, was in the Navy. So my father's black. My mother's Japanese. And so... Um, so, but I just love, you know, loved the fact that I grew up in Hawaii. And so when I started, I, that was my lens. And um, I did a documentary that I started years ago um, on Barack Obama, because when he was running for president, people on the mainland, all the, the Washington press corps kept saying, why doesn't he act like the uh, angry man from Chicago? You know, he doesn't act like the black man from Chicago. And I'm like, well, he was raised in Hawaii. <laughs> you know, it's different when you're raised in Hawaii. And so that's, so my friends told me to start that film and I did. And it's a big epic film. It'll be released in 2024 for the next presidential cycle. And there's a companion book along with the um, documentary film. But while I was working on that, I ran into Kenny, Kenny Inouye, Senator Inouye's son. And I wanted to interview him about the friendship of, between Senator Inouye and Barack Obama. And so we were talking I went over to his house, we were talking, and I was filming him, and then it ended up being just three hours of talk story, and I said, this is great information, no one knows this stuff, and so we decided to do a, a, a short documentary film, and so that's Senator Turnoy told by his son, you know, inside stories about this fabulous person who really had an impact on Hawaii, and stories that no one else knows, <laughs> and so that's that, and then, um, when I was in Washington, I also got a, was awarded a fellowship with Patsy Mink, and, but I couldn't take it because I was working for Senator Inouye, but I did work with women's issues in the 1970s. And, you know, and so when her 50th anniversary came about, I decided to launch, similar to Senator Inouye's project, Patsy Mink Untold Stories. There's so many untold stories about this remarkable woman, and she really changed America. So that's my mission, you know, untold stories, historical, honest, authentic stories about people that really had an impact. And they're from Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Um, yeah, getting back to uh, Senator No and uh, his son, Kenny, uh, what are the, some of the untold stories? I know I saw your thing, which was really interesting with Robbie Alm. That was really good also with talking about Senator Inouye, you know right? Right, there's so many. Yeah, one thing, uh, people don't know this, that um, Senator Inouye became a senator because of his wife, Maggie. <laughs> That's an untold story. Yeah. He was a congressman. And in those days, you couldn't come home to campaign. And he was going to run for Senate in 1962. So his wife, Maggie, and she's brilliant. You know, she went from, um, she went to Columbia University back in 1947. How many Japanese local girls go to get their masters at Columbia back in those days? So she went there and got her masters in education and speech. And so she's brilliant. And so she campaigned every day from 10 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night for her husband who was stuck in Washington. And she campaigned door to door, grassroots. And she turned because so uh, Dan Inouye, Congressman Dan Inouye was supposed to lose. <laughs> he was, because his, his, his opponent, people don't know this, was Dillingham, the son of the wealthiest man on, in Hawaii, Dillingham, and um, part of the big five, and had all the money in the world. 
Uh, they threw luau's all the time, free luau's. I mean, you know, and so, but Maggie Inouye did it. And she, she, with her sincerity and her honesty and her authenticity, was able to grassroots get people to support her husband. So when he finally came home on recess, it was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, and he, that's how he won. That's an untold story. And that's on our part of our Senator Noy told by his son. So what, what race was it that Senator Inouye actually beat uh, Betsy Meg? It was another well, that race, was in, right? That was in, yeah, that was in um, 1959 when we had the congressional seat open up when we became a state. And uh, she always had her eye on that to be the representative. And he was gonna run for Senate, but John Burns changed things around. He didn't like that. And he wanted Inouye to be the uh, representative um, and then let two other people run for Senate. And it was a real stressful, because Inouye wanted to run for Senate, not for the rep, but Burns, he, create, he was in charge. Burns was, he created the machine. You know, he has that cop. He was a cop background. Yeah, yeah. He controlled. So, yeah. And, yeah. And, and uh, we're jumping around, but uh, Betsy Bank later ran against Kwaki Matsunaga also for Senate, right? Right, 1976. And she lost so he, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, you get, you get a lot of things, you know, going on with Senator Inoue. Uh, recently, we had the, the Navy destroyer named after him. Right. That Kenny was involved with, the Christian name. Right. I think he also had uh, some other ship. They wanted to name him after him. He told him to name him Kaimanahila. And Congressman Abercrombie had a tugboat named after him. Kind of really fit him. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's um, let's get it to your uh, Betsy Mank uh, untold stories. Yes. Well, one thing about Patsy, people don't know, she was born and raised in Maui. Absolutely brilliant, and she was raised in her family. Her father did not want; she didn't have to be the traditional Japanese girl. <laughs> She was raised as an equal to her brother by her parents. And so she was the student body president at Maui High School. She was valedictorian at Maui High School. Ever since she was four years old, she wanted to be a, be a doctor. And when she applied to medical school, she was turned down by a dozen of them because she was a girl. And um, so, um, so that's that kind of prejudice based on your gender is what motivated her and she always focused on education and in my research i found out that when she was chair of the senate education committee here in the state senate in the territorial senate she allocated more dollars per pupil for you know per capita per people back when she was chair of that committee in 1958 than all the years since she always put money into education on the federal level, when she went to Washington, she helped um, President, see President Johnson, people don't know, Lyndon Johnson was a school teacher before he got into politics. And so they had a kind of a partnership of like minds. So, so she helped him with Head Start. So the program all across America for, 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 for youngsters um, in um, preschool, Head Start, that was something she worked with President Johnson getting funded. Also, special education. Before that, if you had um, a disability, there was no room for you in public schools. She created a program where there was federal funding for public schools across America for children with special needs that needed special education. She funded that. Um, also, when you were immigrant children who came to America who didn't have English wasn't their native language, and they needed to have bilingual education in the beginning so they could adapt. She created that program and federal funding for that. And so now you have bilingual education or English as a second, they call it now English as a second language. She created that. And that, ha and that benefits all of America. So this is the stuff she did in the 1960s, way before Title IX. So it yeah, was for all America. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of us. Uh 
just think of pets and mink and title nine and women's sports to so so we know <laughs> Yeah. So I'm glad, glad you're bringing all this up. Yeah, and Title IX wasn't originally for sports. It was originally for education because um, if you wanted to go to med school, it's very hard for you to get into med school or to law school or to business school or to engineering school or anything because they didn't allow women. So originally Title IX was for education to, to end that discrimination. The reason why it got associated with sports is all the football coaches were like, angry no we, you can't include sports <laughs> you're gonna take money away from football you can't do that you're gonna take money and so they complain the most and because they complain the most they got the press attention so for two years after title nine passed in 1972 for two years the the athletic directors all across america especially the football coaches and the basketball coaches complained and they were calling press conferences and they even got senator john tower from texas this powerful senator to ex to introduce legislation to exempt college football and exempt college basketball from title nine and patsy went back and fought 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 and she defeated that exemption <laughs> she beat john tower you know but that because of all the publicity that's how title nine became associated with just sports it includes sports, but it's it's more now. Like if you, if you look on TV and you see during the pandemic when you know when we were all home and we were watching doctors, they had like these women doctors talking about the pandemic and COVID and you know what to do. Women doctors that 50 years ago would have only been white men, but because of Title IX, you have all these women doctors now. That's Patsy Mink. That's Title IX. about uh, discrimination, you know, all around. You know, they, uh, even she saw it in her father who was a civil engineer, you know, passed over for, for promotion at the sugar plantation because of his race. Right. And he resigned to start his own land surveying company, like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, in a way, she was, she was uh, the first of many in, in Congress, first woman of color, first Asian uh, American woman, first woman elected to Congress in Hawaii, among other things. Yeah. And she, she really was a fighter. Yeah, yeah. But you know, there's another side to Patsy that people don't know here. Um, she loves hula. She was a hula dancer. She yeah. loved that. And she also had a side to her you know, there's people think she's just that, you know, angry lawyer, legislator, fighter. Yeah, that's true. But outside of that, she was very caring. She had aloha in her. She always uh, was a very generous person. And she, I, I heard somebody talk who used to work for her, and they said that she would crack jokes. And it was so funny that she had them laughing for hours. So, um, so she was stern at work, but at other times she could be funny. And that's how she was an effective legislature. She had a relatability. And Senator Noy had the same thing too. You had a personality that you could relate to people. So that's how you were able to persuade and get them to, to support your bill. And Noy had that, Patsy Mink had that. And really great leaders, political leaders have that ability to talk story and be real. And be authentic. That's how you get somebody from Texas to support what you want to do. That's how you get somebody from Massachusetts to support what you want to do. And you're from Hawaii. Yeah. So, would you know why a lot of other name politicians kept running against her? Well, they. What happened is, is it goes back to Burns. You know, Burns wanted control you know, that he was a cop, but also espionage. He wanted control. And Patsy Mink was independent and totally, really liberal, and he could not control her. And so he ran, and it was really a sad part, but it's in the, and um, Patsy Mink's daughter wrote a book that just came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, and in the book that Wendy Mink wrote, she talks about how, you know, the Burns machine ran candidates in the primary to primary her all the time. So she had to fly back home to deal with, you know, constantly every, every, her rule was every two weeks, 
to every two weekends she was back home. Whereas others in the Hawaii delegation could stay in Washington for a month or two before they came home, but she had to deal with a sabotage. So because she was too independent, she did not want to be part of the machine. She was, they sabotaged her, but that's the reality. That's how it was. Well, part of the untold story, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, um, she kind of back to her fighting, uh, fighting spirit. She was not afraid to fight the EPA, for example, on the nuclear testing. Uh, to, you know, went through part and uh, nuclear testing in Aleutian Islands. Well, also here, yeah. near Hawaii, yeah. back yeah. in the 1950s, Johnson Atoll, Johnson Island, which is about yeah. 750. Yeah. You, you're Kauai. Yeah, so 750 miles from southwest of the island of Kauai, they were doing open air nuclear testing. And so because Patsy Mink, because she wanted to go to, to law, med school, she had a scientific mind and her daughter talks about it in her book. So he, she, she knew um, biology, she, had, she also majored in chemistry. So because of her scientific mind and her husband, John Mink was a geologist. So when you have scientific minds, they looked at it and said, this is dangerous. Open air testing this is dangerous to human beings. It's dangerous to all life. So she in the 1950s organized and helped protest no more nuclear testing because that and, and, and also Wendy talks about it. She was six years old going into the first grade. Her parents took her to they drove up, drove up Cuneo Road to um, a ridge and they were able to watch and see a nuclear blast from Johnson Island, which was 700, 800 miles away. They could see the night light up. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I worked uh, down in the Marshall Islands where they did some nuclear testing. Well, before I went, but after Fax was there. Uh, yeah, and getting back to her suit against the EPA, and everybody else bought it, even, you know, this, uh, went through different parts, and that didn't stop her. Uh, and it was even when they had legislation and was vetoed by the president, but then she had it overridden, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah. She fought all the way. Yeah, because could you imagine having that so close to Hawaii and everybody in the Pacific? It, you know, the nuclear testing, it was just too dangerous for life, and, you know, human beings, everybody. Yeah. So, but that's, that's an instance of her speaking truth to power she always had that she wasn't afraid to speak truth to power and so when people look at her life story hopefully it can inspire those of us today young people today to say you know when i see something that's wrong something that's an injustice you know they need to have the an inspiration to be courageous to speak truth to power yeah so what else does uh her daughter saying. Oh, so much. Um, about Hawaii, it's, she talked a lot about um, her, her mom's values come from here. One thing that I, I didn't know, Patsy Ming's grandfather, who immigrated from Japan, um, her, her grandparents, her, her grandfather first went to a plantation in, on Oahu and Aiea, but he was abused by the plantation. So he ran away like a fugitive, he ran away. <laughs> <laughs> hot on a boat and got to Maui, yeah. but he was a fugitive. So he hid, he lived in the jungle. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know what you call it, but he was like off the, he lived because he was hiding and, and his wife, well, his second, she was her, her first marriage, her first husband beat her and she was abused. So she, <laughs> so, and so they both, you know, they, they, they went to Maui, but but the plantation system, you know, the, the stereotype is that, oh, everyone got along and everyone was happy. No, it was a very, very horrific existence. You know, the, the, the plantation workers were abused. A lot of them were abused. And her grandfather said, and he left. <laughs> and after hiding for a couple of years, his first job on Maui, he was a ditch digger. 
he dug ditches for the irrigation water. And isn't that amazing? He dug ditches. His son was the first Japanese to go to UH and get a degree, you know, and then his granddaughter becomes a congresswoman. <laughs> is that amazing? <laughs> but he did not want to be abused and he left. He stood up, you know, truth to power. He said, I'm not, I, I'm not going to be abused and he left. So that kind of spirit from her grandfather, her grandparents was in her. Yeah, I can understand that, uh, you know, the, at the plantation, my, my dad was with the plantation during World War II. And he, although he had a degree in uh, sugar chemistry, you know, he, because of his race, you know, uh, he was uh, not looked upon fondly. So he just quit and farmed on his own. So I can understand that. Yeah. A lot of people did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and those stories need to be told, you know? Yeah, and she was also at one time, I see she was a assistant secretary of state for oceans, environmental and scientific affairs, as you mentioned, you know, because of her knowledge. Right, yeah, President, after she lost to Matsunaga, President Jimmy Carter yeah. appointed her that. Another thing people don't know, and it's in Wendy's book, her daughter's book, mm -hmm. Um, she was so admired, Patsy Mead was so admired for her, who she was and her authenticity that um, I don't, most people don't know this, but remember when Vice President Walter Mondale won, he, got, he was a Democratic nominee in 1984 against Reagan, you know, Reagan's second, not second um, campaign. So um, Mondale was looking for a female Vice President. He was considering Patsy Mead. But instead, he picked Geraldine Ferraro from New York. But he admired Patsy Mink enough that he, she was considered yeah. on his shortlist. He also said that if I, because I didn't pick you for vice president, if I become president, I will nominate you for the Supreme Court. Patsy Mink. <laughs> so, yeah. She, she also ran for president, right? Right, 1972, it was the anti-Vietnam. Um, she ran and she was on the ballot in Oregon. And uh, so, so that she was the very first Asian American woman to run for president of the United States. Uh, of course she didn't win, but she wanted a platform to be able to go on debates, to be able to speak about how we need to get, get out of Vietnam. Yeah, I mean, like you said, she's, she was a fighter and you know he spoke her piece but then when she came to for example came to Kauai she's like very humble yeah yeah she had she she had a she had a personality where she could um on all facets if she had to talk to President Carter or President Lyndon Johnson or whoever she could and be very prepared and, and speak as a congresswoman but she could also when they, I heard a lot of people say this, when the Democratic Party had, um, you know, after the, during the convention, they always have these like hospitality suites, Hawaii puts on a hospitality suite at the convention, you know, they bring out the Hawaiian musicians, right. they dance, she loves dancing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people said she was a great dancer, she lived, yeah. yeah. And your daughter was dancing hula up in Washington, D.C. also, right? Yeah, with a, with a, with a halal, yeah, in D.C. Oh. She was a, she was Puno's Holoku Queen 2020. Oh yeah, all right, terrific. Yeah. Is she out of school already? Yeah, she's now um, two years of college. Well, COVID really messes things up, but two yeah. years of college, yeah. She's she's in she's in New York. Oh, is she yeah. studying politics? Uh, global studies, but she's now 20. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. Well. It's a different world now. Right. Yeah. But the younger generation, they want to hear about these stories of their elite, of these people, because that inspires them to be like them, you know, to have the, 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 the strength and the courage to be like them. So, so getting back to your untold stories, uh, who else do you have uh, 
on your list of uh well people. i'm gonna do i'm gonna do one on sparky monsonaga too i'm also gonna talk about um patricia psyche she did a lot with the small business administration people don't right, know her. right she's an amazing woman so you know it's, it's not all democrats i'm doing she's a republican that's an yeah, amazing yeah. And so it's just people from Hawaii that did incredible things in Washington, D.C. And that ties into my Washington, Hawaii back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm glad that uh, it's, you're going uh, full speed ahead with your uh, podcast, your, your stories. But when going back to when you worked in the uh, work with Senator Inouye and Betsy Meg. What did you do there? Well, I worked for, so I needed a, I was a college student. So Senator, I was just a low level clerk. It was a college job with Senator Inouye. And Patsy Mink offered me a fellowship for the summer that I was there um, in college, but I couldn't take it because I was already on the Senate payroll, but I did volunteer to help her with the women's oh. organizations there. But um, so my experience there was very young. But when I was 21 years old, I started my first business, publishing magazines, Washington, Philadelphia, New York for the travel industry. And that was, so I've been an entrepreneur in media all these years. So you, uh, you still keep in touch with Senate, uh, Senator Inouye's son? Danny Inouye and Patrick DeLeon. Patrick yeah. DeLeon, Senator Inouye's yeah. uh, brilliant absolutely brilliant chief of staff and he's in washington and um i guess and he, he everything that senator Noy wanted to do sent patrick made sure it was done <laughs> yeah yeah he was he was the man um uh, in the way we uh when you got a time you you got any uh last words or closing statements uh, i firmly believe right now we have a young person who is our another Senator Inouye. We have another per, we have another Patrick uh, Pat, Patsy Mink out there. We have the talent. Hawaii produces brilliant people because of the culture that we're raising. We produce brilliant Barack Obama. We produce brilliant people and political leaders. And so out there, there is our future. And they just need to know that because they're from Hawaii, they can do great things because the values that you get. The character development you get from going up here can take you to the topest level. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, joining us today, uh, Gloria Borland. Mahalo to our wonderful guests, Gloria Borland. Mahalo to the viewers on Think Tech Hawaii. Hello. If you, if you like the Think Tech free media shows, please help support this non profit platform. Aloha. Mahalo, Abudu, Malama Pono. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.